Drivers Hope. these guys warm enough. They're as serious as anything I've ever seen in my life. Like this, a lot of us think, man, if I ever got paralyzed, you know, I don't know what I would do with my life, but you go on living and you, and you find something to have passion about and you do it well. of guys that were playing basketball, quadriplegics, who weren't happy with uh, the competitiveness of playing basketball. They weren't able to, co to participate. So um, they kind of developed this game out of that necessity of wanting to play. The United States Quad Rugby Association has an impressive history. Starting in 1981, Brad Mickelson introduced the sport to the U.S. In 1982, the University of North Dakota hosted the first international tournament, with two Canadian teams from Manitoba and Saskatchewan, and two U.S. teams from North Dakota and Minnesota. In 1988, the USQRA was formed to help regulate and promote the sport on both the national and international level. The first national championship was held at North Dakota. In 1990, the first Stoke Mandeville Games were held in England. Team USA wins the gold medal. In 1995, the International Wheelchair Rugby Federation held the first World Championships in Switzerland. Team USA captures the gold. In 1996, wheelchair rugby is a demonstration sport in the Paralympic Games in Atlanta. Again, Team USA wins the gold. In 2000, wheelchair rugby is a full medal sport in the Paralympic Games in Sydney, Australia. Team USA wins the gold medal over Australia with over 10,000 fans watching the gold medal match live, in addition to being broadcast to a potential 8 million TV viewers. The USQRA is a leader in developing and promoting the sport of wheelchair rugby. It continues to be an integral part of the world's fastest growing wheelchair sport. The game of wheelchair rugby has evolved so much that the equipment has had to evolve with it. Everyday chairs were first used to play the game, and because of safety and innovations in offensive and defensive chairs, the rugby chairs have changed considerably. The wheels on modern rugby chairs have camber, which give the chairs a great deal of stability, allows for quick turning, and adds to the safety of the game by protecting the player's hands. Every chair's front bumper is the same height, so it protects the player's feet. Offensive chairs have added wings to protect from defensive chairs blocking or picking them. Defensive chairs have bumpers made specifically for picking and blocking. You're not gonna have any problem following the rules if you uh, watch basketball, if you watch hockey, if you watch soccer, you'll get it down in a couple of minutes. All I can tell you is, they go out and they, uh, they stick each other pretty good. Quad rugby is played on a regulation size indoor basketball court with four eight minute periods. Each team is allowed four players on the court. The players are classified according to their physical ability. Only eight points of classification are allowed on the court at any time. Goals are scored by carrying a regulation size volleyball on the player's lap across the goal line. The player has 15 seconds to advance the ball into the opponent's half court and any player with, with the ball must dribble every 10 seconds or a turnover is awarded. Much like the crease in hockey, there is what we call a key area just before the goal line on the court. The defense is allowed to have only three players in the key during play. Keep in mind, this sport is full contact, chair to chair, but not person to person. Just like in hockey, players can be sent to the penalty box when a rule is violated. Now that we've gone over some of the basic rules of the game, let's watch some examples in action so that we can understand the rules and penalties that make up the game. 
Every game is started with a jump ball. When one team gains possession, the other team is in control of the possession arrow. A score is awarded when one player has possession of the ball and any two wheels cross the end line. When a score is made, the other team has 10 seconds to inbound the ball. Once the ball is inbounded, the team has 15 seconds to cross the half line. And when a player has possession, he must either dribble or pass every 10 seconds. As you can see, this is a very fast-paced game. One rule made to protect the players is the spin rule. A player may not hit another player's chair behind the rear axle, forcing it to violently spin. Reaching in is called when a defensive player tries to steal the ball and makes contact with the player in possession. He must serve a one minute penalty. A jump ball is called when a defensive player makes contact with the ball for at least one second. The ball goes to the team with the possession now. Earlier we were talking about the different classifications and how does that translate because you don't see all four guys touching the ball generally. Yeah, depending on your classification, you're going to have a, a pretty specific role on the court. Generally, the three fives, the threes, the two fives, and even down to the twos are the ball handlers and the ones that you can get to. They've got the better uh, function in the upper extremities for passing, catching, that kind of thing. The lower point players, the point fives and the ones are generally out there. You know, they're like the linemen. They're out there blocking and picking and, and trying to open up the holes for the big guys. One of the great things about quad rugby is hearing all the stories about how the game has had a positive impact on players' lives. These guys are nuts. There's no way I'll be able to do this, but... Once you try it, you find out that it's it's not as bad as it initially looks, and it's a whole lot of fun, you know. And then when rugby came along, it just, I don't know, just seemed to give me that boost I needed to get up over the hill, you know, just to, just to live this lifestyle, to accept it, to you know, move on. Um, it's, uh, it's been enormously beneficial for me and for my mindset, and, uh, you know, for my future, for my possibilities. I have more energy now. It's like, before it was so hard for me to get out of bed. I mean, without doing anything. And now it's like I have a lot of energy. There's a fire cry from our team, the caliber of players on our team to the national level teams, but we're in this for fun. When this is, we take it serious as we can when we're on the court, but the whole tournament aspect is about having fun. I'll never forget the day the guy asked me if I wanted to play. I said, sure, I'll be there. I ain't stopped since. I'm pretty grateful to the game for what it did to me. Change me. I, I like going to practice. I like getting up on Sunday mornings at 6 o'clock, 5.45 in the morning to go to practice. Um, I certainly never said that about anything else before. And I went to the first practice and I see there are even lower point players. Everybody's pushing. I had projections on my push rims. That's, that's what I had learned. That's all what I had always used. Never thought that I could push a wheelchair without the projections. You know, the idea that, that everybody is a regular person. All, we're all regular people out trying to live a normal life. And um, um, this, this, this helps us do that. I had never been around a lot of other people in wheelchairs before. Going to the hospital, you see the newly injured, but I hadn't been around a lot of people that I hadn't learned from others. And that's one of the biggest things, even tournaments now. I mean, I've been doing this four years, and I've met a lot of quads in every level of disability. Everybody has their little ways of doing things. And you learn that and take some ideas back. And it's I've come a long way in that aspect. They didn't have a clue about what was possible, about what I could do, and um, I think I think that gives the sport of rugby, sports period, um, gives people like me an opportunity to learn from uh, those guys who have been there and done that. I guess. Yeah. Quad rugby probably saved my life. You know, I'm out traveling all over. You know, East Coast, all the way from Quebec City to Sarasota, Florida. This completely changes things. It makes it fun. Um, uh, you find yourself looking forward to practices and looking forward to games. And um, 
uh, just just get out and try it. It's a whole lot of fun. You gotta give it a try. At least come out and check out a practice. I mean, just go out there and try it. I mean, I know they're gonna like it. I know they're gonna love it. I mean, because you get to like you know do something, you know, and it's like so physical and it's awesome. It's an awesome sport. If they're interested in sports, you know, most of them played sports before they were injured. And the biggest encouragement I would have, and what took me a little while to come to realize, is that life does go on after an injury, a disability, and you know, it's your responsibility to make the choices to get back into life. And if sports, whether it's at a competitive level, a recreational level, a social level, whatever, but any kind of sports or recreational activities, number one, they're good for your body, they're good for your mind, they're good for your soul. Number two, they're a lot of fun. I mean, you know, I've had a chance to travel around the world and have some experiences that I probably wouldn't have had the ability or opportunity to do had I been able-bodied my entire life. I've got a gold medal from the Paralympics. Not many people in the world can say that. Um, but my encouragement is just to realize that there are opportunities out there for you. It's really up to you to make the choice to get into it. But once you get into it, get to know the guys, get to know what's going on, and have fun doing it. I think you'll find that you'll enjoy it.